this will be the final video of the DIY CNC build series basically. So basically what I want to do is make my 3D model available to anybody. Uh, it's The link will be on my website and it's also in the video description down below. Anybody can go to this link, you don't have to have any Autodesk Fusion, any 3D modeling software. You can just click the link and go to this thing. You can download it, uh, step file, any, any file you want. I also have an Excel spreadsheet of what I have into it, all the things that I bought, and some of the stuff that I should have bought in the first place. Little. To start off with, I have these long, flat pieces of stock here. And these are quarter inch thick and 58 inches long, two and a half inches wide. And I have two of those on each side, then I have that same exact thing but four inches wide here. And those are so these linear carriages can ride on them basically. And the whole base is basically made out of 80-20, which is kind of expensive but relatively easy to model and put together. And there's no welding involved. So I bought a 3-axis kit from Build Your CNC. I don't recommend this because they didn't tell me parts were out of stock and I had to wait a month for parts. That's these three stepper motor drivers, three stepper motors, not counting the Z-axis, and it was just kind of a mess. What I should have done differently? I should have bought most all this stuff from Amazon. It's much cheaper to do it that way. and. Not to mention the breakout board that I got from Build Your CNC was like $90 because it ran off USB and I didn't need the USB later on. So what I have on this Excel sheet is everything that I should have bought. Now that comes to like $180 and I ended up spending like $450 on the Build Your CNC kit. Yeah, you don't need to do that so don't do that. Also just find a really old computer that has a parallel port. I know I didn't list it on here, but I just found one, a super cheap one off Craigslist and went and got it. Not a big deal. Up next is the water table. You don't need one. I wanted one because it's, this stuff is kind of dusty. And I knew that this keeps down on the dust because the water collects all, all this crap, like I said in the last video. You don't need that. That's an extra $1,000 that you don't need to spend to build this thing. And CNC Router Parts sells this water table as well. But CNC router parts also sells these linear carriages right here. And that's where I got those from. They were already made, already perfectly designed, and it's better for me to just get these instead of making them myself. And I have three sets of them. As for some of the machine parts that I made, these machine parts, I ordered aluminum basically from a guy on eBay. And this might be hard for some people to actually do because I have the Tormach over there that can do all this stuff and I can cut it to size and then mill it down to whatever and counter bore and do all sorts of stuff. And there is the pinion gears. So I found a good deal on pinion gears from a guy on eBay, Hubbard CNC, and he has these made in their quarter inch bore and these are 15 or 20 teeth? Something like that. So I started using Pathpilot and it took a little bit to find out how to configure it to run with the machine but it works and it was free because I just downloaded it from the USB stick that Tormach gave with Pathpilot 2.0. If you don't have that and you don't want to have that, then you can buy Mach 3. And the license for Mach 3 is kind of expensive, but you don't really need it if you want to use Linux CNC or Pathpilot like that. The plasma cutter was $800 on eBay with free shipping. Not too bad. Amazon has basically the same price with their Prime and it's free shipping as well. This was the cheapest plasma cutter I could find. I think it can cut half inch steel with the 45 amp. The C-beam Z-axis. And this is from Open Builds. It's a pretty cool thing here. I mean this was $130, that's with the stepper motor up top. So really not too bad there for the price that it is. And it already came together, literally I could just bolt it straight on to this thing here. And I know right off the bat I didn't want to have a Z-axis, I just wanted to have a fixed mount. Then I quickly realized that I need a torch high controller, so that's when I got the Z-axis. Then I have the cable track and the 18 gauge wire. Not too bad, you can get that from Amazon pretty cheap. And then a couple miscellaneous things. And then the voltage regulator, it just regulates the 48 volts coming out of the power supply and regulating it down to like 12 volts. And so I can put it into the breakout board. And please excuse the bird's nest here. 
I'm getting an enclosure for all this stuff at some point. They're really cheap on eBay. The latest breakout board that I use, it was $12. That's insane. I always spent like $90 and then $75 on a USB, and then I got one with a parallel port, which is this one. The USB right there is just for power, but the parallel port is what sends the data. And this one was so much better. I could not believe it. And last is the Torch High controller. This Torch High controller is from Proma Electronics, and they're in Poland, I believe. This one was fairly cheap, and it's pretty foolproof, pretty cool how it works. I still haven't fully hooked it up, but it's coming soon. Now, for my first CNC build, trying to work it on a budget, I didn't see, I don't, I don't think it's too bad for what the final price was. I didn't need a few things, and I messed up a few times but that happens I guess and I went slightly over budget for what I wanted it to be but that's okay it's finally done there's a few things I still want to add the omic sensor or a uh, floating head the torch head comes down and then like spring loaded up hits a limit switch and then backs off the material and then cuts so that's the only other thing I really want to add to this thing besides the enclosure for all the electronics and after that I think I've pretty much finalized this thing and I know it can cut a few other tweaks that I probably will end up doing and that is the pinion gears on the stepper motors. I want the anti-backlash system there. Uh, basically it keeps, it works on a spring. CNC router parts has these things if you ever want to look it up. But it's basically keeping the motor and the pinion gear spring loaded up against the gear rack. And that helps with any backlash that it might have. So anyway, if you want to build something like this yourself, then I have the Excel sheet and I have the full design in the description below. I'll have the Excel sheet on my website if you want to go download that and, I don't know, configure it yourself or whatever you want to do, you can go do that. Like I said, if you don't actually have a 3D modeling software, you can still hit that link and pull up that full design on an Autodesk website or something like that and rotate it around and just look at pretty much anything you want. Now with this design, I didn't put in any of the bolts or angle bracket corner brackets for eight, the 8020. I didn't put those in, but they are also in the Excel sheet, so they're there. Everything to put this thing together is in that Excel sheet. So I hope you enjoyed the build. I know it was kind of unorthodox. I was all over the place, and I did some stuff with the Tormach in between there, and then came back to it, but it just takes time, and it's still taking time. But I hope you enjoyed it. And I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching.